All right, welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Benchard, and if you've ever wondered how an agency goes from zero to $100,000 per month plus, well, I'm gonna break down the stages of evolution that happen in an agency when you go from less than $10,000 per month to over $100,000 plus per month. And I call it the agency evolution. Um, it's something I'm working on now because in Legion Enlightened, I'm working on automating your agency and the stages that you go through and the stages of evolution. And so this is going to be useful if you're doing less than 10K per month, 10 to 20K per month, 20 to 50K per month, or even 50 to 100K per month. And the reason why is because it gives you sight into the future, into what you're gonna, what's going to be happening. And there's certain KPIs and benchmarks within each of these phases that you're, you'll be able to compare yourself to. Um, so let's dive into it. And we're gonna start down here at the less than 10K per month mark. So if you are doing less than 10K per month, these are a few attributes that's gonna describe your agency right now. And by no means are these set in stone. You may, be, you may have a different structure in your agency than what I'm about to describe, but it's a typical agency that you would see, okay? So it's not black or white. Now, likely if you're doing less than 10K per month, your niche is not very defined. You may think you have a niche, but it's not exactly very defined because you don't have that many clients. And you may have clients in different areas and different niches and different sections, and you kind of have a niche, but it's not really defined. You're also doing a lot of client work. So you're doing a lot of deliverables on a daily basis. You are really in the business right now and doing client work for the clients. Your margins are typically at 80% or greater at this stage when you're doing less than 10K per month. Why are they so damn high? Well, it's because you're doing a lot of the work. In an agency, it's very labor intensive. There's not very many expenses other than software. And software is not that much, depending on the type of uh, service you're providing. And so you can do everything with your own time. And in my own agency, when I started three years ago, I went from zero to 10K per month in about three months. And I was you know, pretty much 95, 98% profitable because I had no employees. I hired a virtual assistant at about 12, 12K per month. But it's, you have high margins when you're doing less than 10K per month, all right? And you have between one to 10 clients. So I say one to 10 because uh, some of you may not typically have a recurring uh, uh, pricing model. You may have a project-based pricing model where your agency does some project-based work and it's like a one-time thing with a, with, a, with a client. And if that's what you have, then typically for you to get to 10K per month, you, you may have between five to 10 projects, all right? And um, if, you know, one to 10, because if you're doing recurring stuff like managing advertising or uh, something that's recurring on a monthly basis where you have a retainer, you can have like two or three clients and hit 10K per month. You can even have one client, but typically your first client is not worth 10K a month. And then you might have one to two VAs at this point. So if you're smart, you'll definitely have one virtual assistant before you pass 10K per month, all right? And if you're really damn smart and um, you really wanna just completely remove yourself from the work, you'll likely have one virtual assistant and another person, which we'll talk about in the 10 to 20 and the 50 to 20 to 50. But you don't have a proven lead gen system at this phase. I mean, when you're, when you're doing less than 10K per month, you may be trying to do some outbound strategies and lead gen methods to get clients, but uh, you don't, it's not proven. If it was proven, you'd be doing 20 to 50K per month because a proven lead gen system means you can get clients on demand whenever you want. And typically at this stage, you are willing to take on non-ideal clients, meaning a client comes to you, you know they're not the best fit for you and your service, but you're gonna take them anyways because you need the money, you need the finances, you need the cash flow, you're only doing you know, less than 10K per month and you wanna make more money. All right, so then you don't really have an agency framework. You're, you, you don't have like a project plan for clients from zero to 12 months out. You don't really have a framework that an employee could go through and understand how everything works. You are still trying to figure things out at this phase. I mean, like you don't really, you kind of know and you're starting to get a blueprint and a framework in place, but you don't really know 100% what you're doing at this stage. It's very unlikely that you know 100% what you're doing. Otherwise, you would have a framework and you would have a legion system and you'd be in these these sections here. Uh, your agency would die instantly. If you left the agency, it would die instantly. All right, so that's very important to note here. You pretty much own a job and uh, because yeah, it would die instantly. The business wouldn't run without you. So let's move on to 10 to 20K per month. All right, so now you're doing 10,000 or $20,000 a month and these are some attributes that would define you in this, kind of, in this kind of stage. So your niche is emerging. Now you've got like 10 to 15, 10 to 20K per month coming in which means you likely have between two to 20 clients. Uh, again, project-based work would likely have more clients than recurring-based uh, agencies. 
And since you have that many clients and that much data, um, you can kind of really identify a niche at this stage. You can kind of see the patterns and the trends that are happening and you can see, ooh, I have a lot of clients in this category. Maybe I should niche down and really focus in on that. And so a niche begins to emerge and it begins to, to come clear to you. And you're doing some client work. So you're not, doing, you're not doing a lot of client work like when you're doing less than 10K per month. Now you've got some employees and you're doing some client work. Margins are 50 to 70% and I, they can even fluctuate to 30% at this stage. Even I've seen if you're really, if you're fucking up your cash flow and you're not, you're not managing your agency properly, properly, your margins can go down to 10 to 15% at this stage, even 20%. There's no need for it. If your margins are this low and you're doing 10 to 20K per month in an agency, there's no need for it. And I feel free to comment below this video and tell me what your agency is and I'll, maybe I'll go live with you on Facebook to prove it if you really think that, the, that you can't get more than 15 to 20% margins when you're doing 10 to 20K per month. And you have, like I said, two to 20 clients. You have one to two virtual assistants at this point. Again, it's a very amazing hire in an agency, especially a digital agency. Virtual assistants, phenomenal. I, I find all my virtual assistants from the Philippines. And you might have a account or an automation specialist. This is the most legendary hire you can make in an agency. These people, I call them automation specialists, and they are basically developers that specialize in certain, they have certain skills and certain uh, aspects, but they're kind of like a developer, a virtual assistant developer that can build software very rapidly for very cheap prices that can automate a lot of monotonous tasks that the virtual assistants are doing. So this is what I did in my agency when I was doing about 16, 18K per month. I hired this virtual assistant who had skills in like automation and I didn't really know that. And then I, I gave her some tasks and she automated it and it blew my mind. I, it opened up my mind to what was possible. So when you have an, an automation specialist and one to two VAs, this automation specialist increases the maximum capacity of these virtual assistants by two to three X, sometimes even four to five X, depending on how how uh, much monotonous work is in your uh, agency for the virtual assistants. So amazing hire and greatly increases your margins. You have one account executive or you're looking for one. At this stage, you better have one account executive or you're starting to look for one. Um, if you were to get an account executive at this stage, she would st he or she would still be in the training phase. They wouldn't, but they would be no means by doing all the client calls for you at this stage. Um, and you, yeah, so you're still doing client calls but with the account executive, all right? If you've hired the account executive at this stage to come in and start to manage the clients for you so you can push your lead gen system farther and you can scale farther, well, the, the typical transition period that you go through when you hire an account executive, you don't just offboard your clients and onboard them to the new account executive. That doesn't work. It's a very unorganic and your clients wouldn't like that. So the best way to go about it is to just bring them on the calls with you with the clients and they're gonna be in the training phase where they're just kinda coming on the calls with the clients with you and the client and they're listening in and they're getting familiar with that client's account, they're doing deliverables in that account with the virtual assistants, et cetera, and you're migrating them into that, that, that client account. And so that's, you're, not do, you're still doing calls but you're doing it with the account executive if you have one and you're starting to turn down non-ideal clients. So at this phase, 10 to 20K per month, I mean, you got some cash flow coming in. If your margins are healthy, which they should be, you are not going to be taking non-ideal clients. You might take a few. If you do, that's a mistake. You shouldn't be doing it at this stage. There's no need for you to be doing it when you're doing 10 to 20K per month with healthy margins. But some people, most people still uh, take some ideal clients, but you're taking a lot less non-ideal clients at this stage compared to the less than 10K per month stage. All right. And your agency framework is emerging. So you're starting to actually build a framework. It's funny. I mean, in, when you're doing less than 10K per month and you don't have many employees and you're doing all the work, there's not much of a framework in place because there's really not much of a need for the framework because the framework is all up here. All right. So when you start out, normally people don't just start relentlessly uh, building SOPs and stuff because it's just you in the agency. But once you've got an account executive, a couple virtual assistants and an automation uh, specialist, and you've got two to three to four employees, this framework starts to emerge out of necessity. It's almost like nature. It starts to come out of you because it's required for your team members to get, uh, to get things done and get deliverables done properly. So the agency framework is emerging and then the agency would die without you. Again, it's still too small. You're still too small. You don't have enough of, of a proper team and structure to, to, to survive. If you left the agency, it would die almost instantly. 
and growth is from referrals. At this stage, the referral phase is starting to kick in, where you're like, you know, you like I said, the niche is emergent, excuse me, and your referrals are starting to come in. If you're asking for referrals, you're gonna, you know, you can get to 20 to 50k per month pretty easily, and lead gen system is emerging. So at this stage, now you're now you kind of have some employees. You're 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 not tied to deliverables. You're doing some of the client work, but not all of it and you still have healthy margins, you have a, somewhat of a team figured out. So now you're starting to think more and more about a lead gen system at this stage, 10 to 20K per month, all right? And you're really thinking about it seriously, so it is starting to emerge and it's starting to come out. Now, let's move on to 20 to 50K per month. So at this stage, this is an exciting stage to get into, all right? Now, I think it's, it's, it's one of the most exciting because it's kind of like, whoa, like this thing is becoming real. I'm doing 20 to 50K per month. And uh, yeah, I've, personally, just going through this, it was really exciting. And so your niche is well-defined, all right? So you now got your niche. It's, it's, you got so many clients that your niche should be pretty well-defined. It's hard to be a generalist and get to 20 to 50K per month. You could probably do 20K per month, but 50K per month as a generalist with healthy margins and a team and an agency framework, not a chance. Uh, the generalist wouldn't survive that long. And doing little client work. So at this stage, you're doing very little client work. Again, you should have account executives. You should have virtual assistants. You should have a, a on-staff account automation specialist. And so you're not doing a whole lot of client work at this stage. Your margins are still 50 to 70%, all right? You're still maintaining healthy margins. This is kind of the healthy zone. If you really want to be as profitable as possible, the maximum level that you could hit is about 70%. You can maybe do it a little bit more if you're from like the Philippines or if you're from uh, a second or third world country where labor cost is very cheap, because that means for you, I mean, an account executive is going to be very cheap. Uh, automation specialist, all these people are going to be cheap because you're from a country where you can build an onshore staff that is very cheap labor wise. So if you are from a second or third world country, you know, your margin could go up to 80 to 90% at this stage if you pay yourself not a lot. You have five to 50 clients at this stage and you have two to three virtual assistants, one automation specialist, you should have these things, all right? So these things are kind of set in stone. Like I said, not everything here is set in stone, but if you're doing 20 to 50K per month, you should have at least at least one to two virtual assistants, bare minimum. You should definitely, definitely have an automation specialist. There's almost every single agency in the world can benefit from one of these uh, hires. And you likely have one or two um, account executives on your team at this stage. Definitely one, without a doubt. And two is likely because you're, you're, you know, one account executive will hit maximum capacity at around 35 to 45K per month. So they can't just handle 50K per month. So if you're up in close to 50, you're likely going to have two account executives. And you're rarely doing client calls at this stage. So again, like I said, you have the team in place. The account executives have migrated onto all the client accounts that you were originally taking care of and you are no longer doing client calls. This is, this is why this stage is so damn exciting because you go from like feeling like you're you're tied in your agency and you got a freaking ball chain uh, whatever those things are called a chain with the ball on your ankle and you can't really leave it because you got to do these client calls but now you have an account executive who does the client calls for you and the clients are just as happy if not happier because there's a better there's better service and better uh, you know support with that account executive since the account executive isn't wearing a million hats like you were so this is so exciting because you're not doing the client calls. So then you're kind of free. You're like, what should I do? So this is where growth starts to happen very rapidly because you become more free. And so you're only taking on ideal clients at this stage. If you're taking on ideal clients doing 20 to 50 K per month, there's something going on up here mentally. You need to fix that. You should never be taking non ideal clients. Um, agency framework is developed. You can't get to 50 K per month without a developed agency framework. I mean, like you can get to 20K per month with no framework, but you can't do 50 to 100K per month with no framework. You need a framework because you have employees. These employees need training and they need a system. They need processes. They need SOPs uh, for repeatable results that are consistent across all accounts, all right? And your um, six to 12 months is your agency lifeline. So if, you're, if you died or you decided to just kick it back on vacation, your agency would only live about six to 12 months. It still would not live that long without you because you're gonna notice even at this stage with account executives, there's still dependencies, parts of the business that are, uh, if something went wrong or if something changed or if like an algorithm change happens or uh, a client problem comes up or something changes, 
these account executives are going to be going to you for the solution and they're not necessarily going to know how to handle it. This is very common, so what you're going to find is pretty much if <laughs> you die, your agency wouldn't last more than six to 12 months because problems that come up wouldn't really be able to be solved by the account executives. And your lead gen system is running and consistently bringing in clients. At this stage, maybe not at 20K per month, but at 50K per month, you definitely have a lead gen system that is running consistently bringing you in clients. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Again, I, I launched lead gen enlightened months ago to help five to six figure agency owners. Um, you know, get to seven figures and go from whatever they're doing to double it, triple it, get to 100K per month. But you should start probably building a lead gen system down here, even when you're doing less than 10K per month. And that's ideal, but most people don't do that. Um, they have to do some form of lead gen to get clients and start out, but it's like they never really develop a proven framework. And it's best if you can start to develop this down here, it'll definitely streamline your growth and speed everything up way quicker. It's the one thing I wish I would have done uh, if I started my agency and I had somebody telling me, hey, you should, this is what you should do. It's the, it's the thing I wish I could have told myself uh, three years ago when I started, all right? But at this stage, typically in an agency, they start to develop a proven lead gen system that is working for them, whether that's running ads on Facebook, organic methods, outbound, inbound, whatever they're doing, there's tons of different things you can do. And this, is, this thing starts to emerge and it starts to be proven and work consistently, all right? And you're focused more on the agency. So, you know, down here, you're in the business. You're doing all the deliverables. Any, when, when the deliverables are all done and the clients are happy, you're freaking trying to hire people and build and get more clients so that you can scale further, all right? But you're lost in the business. You're really trapped in the business here. You're not necessarily trapped, but you're doing a lot of uh, in the business work. Even, excuse me, down here, you're still doing in the business work. But here, when you got the account executives in place, you got the agency framework, the, the virtual assistants team, you're not necessarily doing the in, in deliverables for the clients or anything. Now, you're pretty much spending 80% of your time on the business and, and, and either uh, solving bigger problems, building software, uh, improving the lead gen system, or uh, making a, a, the agency framework even better and automating certain things, all right? Your agency here is still under your control, and we'll get to that in a sec. You can manage, you know, here at this stage, you may have between, let's see, three, four, you might have between four to six employees at this stage. You, the bare minimum would probably be about two employees at this stage if you're doing 50K per month. Um, but the agency is still under your control. You can still manage three to six people, all right? So that's not that hard. So at this stage, your agency is still under your control, under your uh, watch. But when you get to 50 to 100K per month, this is where you start to lose control and it gets even crazier. So at 50 to 100K per month, your niche is clearly defined. You're doing pretty much zero client work. Your margins are 50 to 70%. This is the standard, by the way. Like if you're, I don't care what you're doing, 50 to 70% is the standard unless you're heavily investing in, in research and development for a month and your margins go down to 30%. 30% should be your bare freaking minimum. I wouldn't go below that. You have 15 to 100 clients. You, you have three to, three to five virtual assistants, two automation specialists, two to four account executives. You're doing zero client calls. You're only signing ideal clients, no fucking around here. You're not taking on any non-ideal clients doing 50 to 100K per month. This doesn't happen. And if you, if, if you are doing that, I mean, all right, hope thankfully now that you've watched this video, you're not gonna do it again. You don't need the cash flow at this stage doing that kind of crap. All of your focus at this stage should be on one of two things, all right? Increasing the ARR per FTE, what does that mean? increasing the annual recurring revenue per full-time employee, okay? And in other words, this means increasing your damn margins. This is one of the most important things you can do at this stage because the agencies can start to go out of control and margins can just deteriorate rapidly, very rapidly if you don't improve the agency framework. So the one of two most important things you're focusing all your time on is increasing the annual recurring revenue per full-time employee and to do that, you're, you're improving the agency framework, you're building software to automate things that are currently being done manually, and you're using the automation specialists for that. Uh, you may actually hire a full-time developer from like TopTal or somebody that's like a very talented developer, uh, software engineer that costs like anywhere between eight to $12,000 a month. 12,000 is like way overkill, but 8,000 to $10,000 a month, and you're building some serious software, uh, custom software for your agency to automate things, to improve your margins and you're improving your lead gen system. So you're doing one of these two things at this stage. Pretty much the only two things you're focusing 
on is improving lead gen system, increasing annual recurring revenue per FTE. This thing basically means increasing your margins and improving your service for your clients. So it's, it's these one of two things, improving service for clients, increasing margins, and bringing in more clients with a better lead gen system, all right? And your agency lifeline at this stage is, is pretty damn good. If you died, it would last about 12 to 18 months. If you have a business partner that's just as innovative as you are, it'll last longer because he's actually, he's just like you, right? If you have a business partner, it, it, it may even last forever as long as that business partner doesn't die. Uh, but if you're the innovative knowledge worker that drives the company forward and innovates, I mean, yeah, if you die, it's only gonna last 12 to 18 months. And the agency could be sold at this stage. Now you can kind of sell the agency here, but if you're gonna sell it here, you need to have a really damn, damn good agency framework and automations in place to make sure that you're, you don't own a job. Because you, if you're gonna sell the, the agency here, which I don't really recommend, but if you did wanna do it, uh, you would just need to have a really good SOP system in place, like a turnkey solution, like a franchise. But here, you've pretty much got that franchise model down, your agency framework is developed, and somebody would wanna buy the agency at this stage if you were to put it up for sale, all right? And the agency is no longer in your control. So at 50K per month, it's, it's kind of in your control. At 100K per month, it's not really in your control. Unless you have 10 clients at 10K per month each and you only have two employees managing all those clients, that happens by the way. Uh, some, some agencies are like that and that's, that's crazy. That's some really cool stuff to have that kind of average uh, amount per client. But that's very, very rare. Typically, uh, you know, your agency will not be under your control because you have three to five VAs, two automation specialists, two to four AEs. So you total have between seven to like 12 employees at this stage. Uh, seven to 10 employees at this stage, and that's a lot to manage, and you can't manage all of that. So the agency is kind of developing a life of its own, and it is uh, going out of your control. And last but not least, we get to 100K per month, all right? I mean, at this stage, <laughs> it's, things, things are pretty different. Your niche evolution begins. So at this stage, when I say greater than 100K per month, this means you could be doing a million a month, you could be doing 500K per month, you could be doing $200,000 per month. It's, 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 it's limitless, or unlimited, sorry. And your niche evolution will begin at some point once you get past this, meaning you may offer another service to the clients that is very relative to your current service that works coherently with that service that you're currently offer and it enhances it. That's ideal, it's parallel to your current service. That's an ideal niche evolution. Hopefully you're not offering something totally radically different that's not parallel to your current service. But the niche evolution will begin because you know, you're gonna have a lot of clients who are happy with your service. They want more from you. You wanna offer more, but I, I would only recommend this once you have maxed out your current clearly defined niche. And a, a clearly defined niche can go really far. Like you could probably, depending on the niche, but most niches can go to like half a million to a million a month and probably even further uh, without expanding them too much. Um, but some niches are very, very niche down and they can't go further than like 100 or even 200K per month. So, excuse me, at this stage you're doing zero client work. You only talk to clients for feedback. So here you, you may be actually talking to clients and saying, hey, I just wanted to, let, to see how you're liking your account executive, um, Destiny, or whatever your account executive's name is, talking to your clients, getting some feedback on, hey, what's the biggest problem in your company right now? You know, in our agency, what we're trying to do is we're trying to expand our service to something that makes sense relative to what we're doing. I just wanted to talk to you about, you know, what's the biggest challenges you're facing in, in your company right now, or whoever your client is, and you're talking to them, and you're getting feedback from the clients. That's like the only time you'll, you'll talk to your clients. Your margins are 50 to 70%. You have greater than 20 clients, at this stage, you have seven, at least bare minimum, seven full-time employees. I, I, like I said, you, you may have 10 clients at 10K per month, which means you could have less than seven employees, but that rarely happens. This is a typical agency framework. We're not, we're not talking about anomalies in this, in this agency evolution. But R&D is important at this stage. You're investing pretty heavily into software because in an agency, things are labor intensive. How do you solve labor? Well, generally it's through software, it's through machines, right? And so your R&D is on f software. You're focusing on hiring geniuses at this stage. So account executives are great and they can develop into an innovative worker, somebody that innovates and changes the, the system and manipulates the system. But you really wanna focus on hiring some geniuses and hiring some really damn smart people to come in and innovate on your existing system that you've built that has cost 100K per month, seven figures 
uh, per year. And you're, you're increasing your contract lengths and average retainer. This is becoming more and more important to you because you know as the agency is making more money, it's like you're not desperate for clients. You're not just taking on clients without a contract. You're no longer doing that. Contracts are really important to you. You wanna get uh, as long as a contract possible from the beginning because this increases your agency evaluation if you do plan to sell the agency. So yeah, the contracts is really important and increasing your average retainer per client is also important because this allows you to have greater margins in your agency because it, again, if you have like fewer clients with increased revenue per client, it means that you can manage more revenue with less employees, which means greater margins, all right? And that's not always the case. Sometimes you may have a very automated solution where you could take on like 100 people at 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks and you'd be totally fine. But that's kind of like, if, if, it's, if it's that automated, you might as well call it like a software because uh, I've never seen something that's quite like that. It may be like a payout ad spend commission on ad spend or something, but still there's gonna be, there's gonna be uh, support tickets and it's not really ideal. So your agency is beginning to form a life of its own. As I said in this one, you've lost control of the agency at this point. Like you cannot manage everybody. The, these people are running a system that you developed and they're working off of that system. And it's like you have, at the, here you have an ecosystem. All right, you've actually built like an ecosystem that is operating on its own without you. You are in the ecosystem and you can still make a really big impact on that ecosystem, on that, on that system. But it's, 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 you know, it's evolving without you and it's got a life of its own now. So you're, you're not like an essential piece to the agency. You are, but it could run a lot longer without you and it's starting to, you know, you can't manage it all. So the agency at this stage could survive one to two years without you, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, depending on if you have somebody in that agency that's a very innovative worker that is like you and can think like you. Again, that's very rare. Um, but like, like, cause in the early stages of a company, if you look at Steve Jobs, when he, would, when he got kicked out of Apple, Apple almost went out of business, right? And they were still a pretty damn big company at that time. But you can see when a company is in its early stages of evolution, when it's not doing billions of dollars of revenue, I, I don't know how much money Apple was making at that time when, when Steve Jobs got kicked out, but it was quite a bit of money and they almost went out of business. The cash flow was like super low. They were launching all these ridiculous products. Then Steve Jobs came back in after being out of the company for years. He cut all these garbage products and he increased cash flow with the, the accountant, the, CP, the uh, CFO of Apple played a very important role at that stage and gave them a new life because he brought innovation back to the company, which was missing for years. So you as the founder, I mean, if you die at this stage, this, you know, 100K per month is not a lot of money. 500K per month is not a lot, even a million dollars per month, that's not a big company. You're still a tiny company relative to like, you know, the, these companies in the Fortune 500 or these other huge ass companies. And the founder is just so important because you drive innovation, all right? So this is the agency evolution in a nutshell. That is the screenshot of the slide from Legion Enlightened. Um, and this whole thing, again, it came from one of the slides in Legion Enlightened where I go through this agency evolution. And the whole point of uh, this part of the program in Legion Enlightened is to allow you to maintain healthy margins, 50 to 70%, 70% is ideal and remove yourself from the agency so you don't have to work more than one to two hours per week if you want to. So in my own agency right now, it's perfectly being managed by the team and the system that we have set up. I'm super blessed for the team that I have. It's a phenomenal team. And um, you know that's the goal of week three in Legion of Lightness to allow you to maintain 50 to 70% margins at scale without burning yourself out and building a really badass team that can manage the agency without you so that you can focus on what's important. It's not so that you can just kick back and be lazy and do nothing. Like for me, I'm doing nothing in my agency right now, but that's by choice because I wanted to leave that agency I wanted to transition to helping five to six figure agency owners and I decided to do that. But it, I was very fortunate to have built a good enough system and hired a good enough team that could allow me to still have that company and only work an hour a week on it and focus on this new venture that I launched Legion Enlightened. So it's a tough thing to do, but if you have the right mentor and you have the right training, you're gonna be able to do it. And I, it, it took me a long time to be able to figure out all the things that I figured out and go through this whole freaking journey. <laughs> but uh, that's why I'm making this video is to speed the journey up and give you a, a, like a vision and a sight into the future as to what your life and what your agency and what your daily life will look like as you evolve, all right?
So hopefully you found this video valuable. If you did, feel free to click the subscribe button below, like the video. I'll be making one video per week and releasing it every Saturday, um, and I'll be announcing it every Monday. So I release it on Saturdays and announce it on Mondays. And um, if you wanted to just to learn more about Legion Enlightened, there's something, there's gonna be like a link in the description box below. So hopefully you found this video valuable. Comment below, let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.